Here in Australia, vehicle to grid is going to transform the country. There's been many naysayers, many people in particular who say, well, EVs can't do it. Your EV can't do it if you've got a grid, but actually it can. Teslas all across the world are capable of vehicle to grid. We know that now. There is evidence to say that it works and more than enough evidence to say you can do it. But if you want to keep your warranty, well, shh, keep quiet about it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Here in Australia, we've been, well, we've approved vehicle to grid. The government wants it to happen. The government believes, well, if there's millions of electric cars on the roads in Australia, it's inevitable this is going to happen. Why not get those EVs to help support the grid, right? There's 4 million households, 30%. Well, in fact, more than that, 35% of households have solar on their roofs. And that solar, much of it is being wasted during the day. Why not get people who own these Teslas that are sitting there, there's thousands of them, all these EVs that are sitting around, and they are, many of them are, why not get them to you know suck up that extra solar we're wasting, then inject that electricity back into the grid at 5 or 6 p.m. when the grid is struggling. It's having to use coal power sometimes. It's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. You can make money yourself. You can use Amber and you can connect your vehicle to the grid right now. There are people all across Australia doing it. Someone using an XPG6 I know is doing it right now, connected to the grid, making money from the grid. Someone else with a Geely EX5 is doing it. Someone else with a BYD is doing it. And there is also two Tesla owners here in Australia right now who are connected to the grid. So it can be done. And you don't necessarily have to have the SIG energy battery system to do it. That's one of the, that's probably the main way most people are doing it. But there will be options of getting different vehicle to grid chargers. There's going to be five different options available by the end of this year. They're not cheap. They're not cheap, but it's definitely an option. You're looking at about $5,000 to $8,000, depending on the charger you actually install. Here's the thing, though. Ausgrid, right? The biggest distributed network on Australia's east coast, which is where most of Australia's population live, they've taken a big step towards a distributed energy future as per the driven by connecting their first fully operational vehicle to grid charging system at a depot at Ataman. We know there's people connected in Melbourne and connected in Victoria and New and also Queensland, but this is the first in New South Wales. Ausgrid, whose distribution network spans 22,275 square kilometers across Sydney, the Central Coast, under and the Hunter Valley. So the vehicle to grid connection paves the way for a future where EVs play an integral role supporting New South Wales grid as it transitions away from coal. One of the biggest coal power plants in the world is not too far away from me, unfortunately. And that should be shut down, though. This is going to help shut that down. We're ready, Ausgrid Group Executive of Distributed Services, Rob Amphlett Lewis, told The Driven. That's what this charger represents, the fact that we're ready now to accommodate vehicle to grid as a technology on our network. Vehicle to grid is emerging as a significant add-on for electric vehicle air owners and for the broader grid by enabling batteries on basically to put power back into the grid, not just your house. So you can power your battery, you know, you can power your house, no problems at all during a storm if the power goes out. But more than that, to make you money every single day. How much money can you actually make? In the United States, I'm not sure what the numbers are. But I know personally people here in Australia who are literally making $1,000 a month on average. On average, $1,000 a month. And that's with only one EV and a battery. One EV and a battery. But imagine two EVs. Two EVs, imagine two, two EVs, potentially 60 to 80, even 100 kilowatt hour batteries in those vehicles. And you don't have to have to plug them in all that often. All you got to do is plug it in really in, from what I'm seeing, guys, between say 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. If you can do that, um, if you could plug your car in from 5 to 7, or both cars in from 5 to 7 p.m., you can make a lot of money. This two-way flow of energy makes EV batteries, which typically have around six times the storage capacity of a home battery, such as a Tesla, such as a Tesla home battery, a massively valuable grid management tool. Put it this way. These are the numbers. 
if only 11 million cars were connected to Australia's grid, that is all of the energy Australia uses on a tw in a 24 hour basis. The average amount of electricity we use in Australia every 24 hours is equivalent to 11 million EV batteries. It's the same number. So it shows you eventually when our entire car fleet is powered by EVs, which many of which will be connected to the grid, that will play an enormous role in Australia's electricity network. Vehicle to, grid vehicle to grid process in Australia was given a push forward in November when Federal Energy Minister Chris Bowen introduced new national standards. And I was there, unfortunately, which is weird. Now, I actually wanted to try and ask Chris a question, but I was ambushed by a Seven News media guy who works for a part of the TV where they just look for sensational news stories. And this guy is basically clickbait. They were running an anti-EV agenda. This channel is basically this mainstream media channel. They wanted they want to take down EVs. The owner of that channel, Kerry Stokes, he's a billionaire who has massive, massive financial interest in fossil fuels. And of course, the number one, the number one sponsor of that network, that channel, that TV network is Toyota. Toyota spent more money than any other company around the world that isn't, uh, I believe there's two fossil fuel companies that have outdone them, but they're third in the world for spending money on lobbying against EV adoption. So you can imagine there's a bit of an interest, vested interest is going on here from that news channel. So anyway, they've kind of ambushed it and I didn't know what was going on. Um, I basically... <laughs> I basically, they twisted it to make it look like I was protecting the minister, Chris Bowen. I don't even know who the guy is. Um, all I was doing was trying to ask him a question. And so his security guard actually pushed me away from the minister. I was, I was like, oh, minister, I'm walking up with him because the Channel 7 News people ambushed him and he, had, he walked away, stormed off. He was angry because he was getting you know, attacked by the 7 News channel who were trying to make an anti-EV propaganda film on him. So I've, I've chased him down. I'm like, mate, 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 just let me ask you a question. Anyway, kindly Chris Bowen has actually answered my question while he's walking away. Then his security guard pushes me away and this news channel completely lied, just complete defamation. I should probably sue these wankers. They lied about it and said that I was protecting the minister, right, from protecting the minister from this news channel. who we were trying to, I'm trying to basically frame him. I didn't even know what was going on. I had no idea who these Channel 7 fuckwits were. I had no idea whose Muppet was. This guy said that he was better than me. I was irrelevant. I'm, all I am is a, a pathetic influencer. And I, I basically, I'm, I'm basically, and he said this, guys, in the video, but he also said it afterwards. He said, um, who is that ridiculous influencer? Basically, you know, I'm, I'm nobody. Whatever, that's fine. I don't care about that. That's not a big deal. But the truth is that um, that's what happened at this show. And it was shocking to me to see the way that some of the media will act. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about honesty. They don't care about any kind of integrity. And they frame me to make it look like I'd created this whole scenario, this whole situation. Guys, even two hours ago, I was I was getting I've been getting messages relentlessly for the last few months from all these people in Australia who hate electric cars, just bashing me all the time, constantly saying, "We know where you live. We're going to find you. You're a cunt. You're this. You're that. Um, you're the scum of the earth." Just. I've been relentlessly attacked for months. Seriously, there's, there's hundreds of messages from all different platforms, email, social media, just everywhere. So yeah, it's been kind of a crazy situation. Getting back to vehicle to grid though, Amphit Lewis says the company has done the foundational work necessary to understand how to integrate vehicle to grid safely and effectively in a way that customers can begin to benefit. So even though sections of the media don't want this to happen, they don't want fossil fuels to die in Australia, they want them to live, the truth is, Vehicle to grid is going to come. EVs are here. The hardware installed at Ausgrid's Artarman depot is a Star Charge Halo 7.4 kilowatt single phase model. It's been tested. It complies with all the rules in Australia, and you should be able to buy the system soon. This is what they said. The vehicle to grid system we've connected is at our depot so that we can test things like plug safety. So when the network goes down, there's no risk to the vehicle or the individuals operating it. Anyway, the exciting news here, guys, is this. This revolution is happening. The media have tried to prevent it from happening, but it's certainly going ahead. So within the next six months, you're gonna have a choice of different vehicle grid models. I'll have a YouTube video comparing those different um, charges, really kind of giving you guys the, the best options and telling you what I think is the best option for you to buy. Let me know how you feel about all this in the comments.
Bye-bye.